when it comes to telling someone that they're wrong, it can go very badly. <laughs> so, so maybe don't do that. I started a new office about four months ago. Here, the optical manager entered all of the orders for the office into the system. I just found out that she has been changing my progressive seg heights to be the same in both eyes. How do I tell her she's wrong? <laughs> Um, telling someone they're wrong, that's always fun. <laughs> well, let's start by addressing the misconception that fitting heights or seg heights need to be the same, which so many opticians really believe. Here, will you, will you hold up, please? Okay. Here's the thing. Back in the days when bifocals were the hot thing, right, it was often taught that we match the seg heights. The thought was that aesthetically, it was more appealing to have the lines even on the lens. And since the bifocal is holding the full ad power, as long as the patient had an adequate amount of room underneath the segment, that they would get full functionality out of the lens, right? Perfect. Well, then here come progressives. And things changed when progressives came, became, you know, the hot thing, but some of our habits didn't. So when measuring the fitting heights of the progressive, the optician typically docks the people or just below it, depending on what you're fitting. Now, no one in this world has a perfectly symmetrical body. This includes your patients. So taking that 22 measurement in one eye and the 21 measurement in the other eye and setting them both at 21 is doing your patient a huge disservice. So, so here's the thing, with aligned bifocal, you have just distance to worry about and just reading, right? Just distance, just reading, that's it. With a progressive, you have the blending that starts shortly below the pupil and progresses down into the intermediate and then into the near. And it is vital that this progression happens at the same rate in both eyes. So here I go with my miming again, but understand ideally with the patient, we want the patient to enter in to your distance, intermediate, and reading all at the same time. So if indeed your patient's glasses are sitting straight, and you mark them up and they are even, the measurements are even, then they're going to experience distance, intermediate, and reading all at the same time. If you have your patient with a 22 seg and a 20 and you mark them as such, again, they're going to experience the same thing because you marked it as such. It's going to be distance and then after the pupil, because this pupil is lower than this one, after the pupil, it's going to transition into intermediate and then into reading, right? But if they are a 22 and a 20, and you switch the measurements to be 21 OU, you're going to have this eye running into the intermediate too late, and this eye, the intermediate will risk running you know, up into the distance. It's gonna get in the way. So we, the thing to understand really is that we're in a profession of precision. We base our measurements in, in half millimeter increments, and every millimeter matters when dealing with the eye. So this minor rotation of the eye into the intermediate zones and into the progressive itself is a huge significance and must be accounted for in the measurements. So being in a trade where we're often taught by our predecessors, which is great to learn the mastery of those before us, but unfortunately we will also mimic their bad habits without question. <laughs> so license or unlicensed, they're silly inconsistencies that we have that we have adopted as opticians across the board. Plus there are many opticians out there who are downright brilliant at their craft, but they're terrible teachers. Some of them are downright jerks, which is not at all helpful to the opticians that are legitimately looking for guidance. And ultimately, in this situation, your manager was likely taught a certain way of doing things and doesn't know otherwise. So the proper way of measuring a progressive would be to always pre-adjust your frame, make sure that there's no point in marking up lenses on a crooked frame, right? So pre-adjust your frame, make sure that your frame is sitting as it should, and mark up your patients. If your fitting heights measure even, then great. If they don't, leave them be. That's how your patient's eyes are. And fitting the lenses in front of their eyes and where their eyes are actually sitting will give them the best overall experience. Now, when it comes to telling someone that they're wrong, it can go very badly. <laughs> so, so maybe don't do that. Um, how you're going to go about addressing your manager is totally up to you. I think that whatever you do needs to be done with a sensitivity and, and a huge amount of respect. And I always recommend taking the option that allows for the most amount of kindness and understanding. Uh, I, I want to offer a tool that may help. Wait, this was an anonymous one. Do we have their email? Oh, we do. Okay, great. Okay, let's do this. So let's email, um, we'll email you a 48-hour access pass to Section 4. In Section 4 of Spexy 101, 
Uh, one of the lessons specifically details out taking proper measurements and best practices to get the most accurate measurements. So maybe you could use this as a tool to tell your manager that you got a free preview of this Rexy 101 course and, and show your manager what you learned. Um, who knows, she might want to get Spexy 101 access for the whole office. It's a win for everyone. <laughs>